Welcome to the show. Good morning and thanks for waking up with us today. Today we're waking up with Vonda Gaynor, the coupon queen, with some money-saving tips from her to you to me. Hey, what? how can I save some money? I mean, we get these great tips from you. We talk all about your name, coupon queen. Yes. Is it all about coupons? Yes and no. Oh, thanks for clearing that uh, up for me, Vonda. <laughs> 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 yes, it's all about coupons. You want to use coupons at whatever store you shop at. But a lot of people think that you have to go to every store in Panama City to get deals. That's bad, it's not necessary, and you end up spending a lot of money. Don, if I didn't own my own business, I would only shop at two stores. Really? A drug, one drugstore mm -hmm. and one grocery store. You can say the name, That's it's okay. It. Right now, mm -hmm. for 2015, it would be at CVS mm -hmm. and at Grocery Outlet. And why is that? For well-rounded shopping trips. At the other stores, unfortunately, they're only good for targeted deals, meaning specific items. But if, I mean, I can't feed my family large quantity of crackers, cereal, pet treats, things like that. Yeah, yeah. So to save on meats, Especially Vegetables, the pet treats. Especially I mean, the, the pet treats. The kids yeah. don't like the pet treats. No, I don't try it. Uh, yeah, <laughs> Preston wouldn't be happy. So they only need to be shopping at two stores. Wow. A drugstore and a grocery store. So that so whatever suits your lifestyle, maybe yes. geography plays a big part in that too. You don't want to drive too exactly. across town to shop. Exactly. So for you, at least those two stores work great. Yes. And you save money. Grocery outlets prices are unbelievably low one can of vegetables at grocery outlet is 49 cents at any other store that you go to to include the commissary you're looking at a dollar plus change wow you, you i mean can't you beat can't that. beat it you cannot beat it so for you you know where you live in your situation that it suits you best now what are some of the factors that we should think about when we pick a favorite place to shop you have Side to, price. For meats and produce, you want them to be fresh. Mm -hmm. Grocery outlets are fresh. You okay. also want to think about the way that you get treated, the customer service. That's true. If That's huge in my book. That's I, huge I would actually pay book. extra if people are going to be polite to me. That's true. Mm -hmm. You want to make sure if you purchase something, if you get home, if you don't want it or don't need it, it was the wrong item, can I take it back and mm -hmm. get a refund with no problems? If I forget to use a coupon when I get to my store. I meant get to my car. Oh, I had a coupon I forgot. Can I go back in? Well, they adjust it. So those are things that are important to me. Mm -hmm. and, and people should think, think about that. Yes. I mean, and if you're a dedicated saver or couponer, mm -hmm. you, know, you, you want to use all of those factors when selecting uh, a store to shop in. Yes, and when it comes to couponing, my biggest thing is teaching people how to use coupons effectively and correctly. You do not want to spend more time out chasing deals than you do inside of your own home. I mean, for as much giving as I do, I haven't been shopping at all. How so? This week. I, it's not ne because I'm an effective couponer. Mm -hmm. It's not necessary for me to leave my home and do a deal every day. That, mm -hmm. that can get expensive. Because you, you kind of have a plan, I exactly. guess. Exactly. You have your, your spending plan for the month or the week or whatever. Yes. And you execute and that, that and I, plan? And exactly. And I stick to my budget and I don't deviate. So you would make a recommendation for people to have a budget? Have a course, budget. Of, you know, for food or whatever else you need to survive. Yes, you know? and then also if they're going to start mm -hmm. using coupons, they're going to be surprised to see if they use a budget just how much they're saving. So I highly recommend budgets and not going over. Well, it's true. And picking two stores, three at the most, you guys, mm -hmm. but no more than that. Yeah. No but, more than that. But, you know, there's got to be the outlier somewhere where there might be a special exception where maybe you're looking for a particular item and mm -hmm. it's like, oh, it's on sale there. Like if you're looking for a new DVR or something and you find I'm going to tell you something. Walmart is great for that online shopping. Oh. You know, you never I think the online shop for Walmart. Two weeks ago, mm -hmm. I needed ink. ink. So, ink. For just a printer? A ink, yeah, for mm -hmm. a printer. So, I went online to Walmart, you know, typed in what I was looking for. So, they had the cartridge. The price didn't show. They said, you won't see the price until checkout because it's so low. Don, it was only $13. And wow. I did site to store. 
If I had went anywhere else, I would have paid twenty nine to thirty two dollars. Holy man. So I recommend the internet and, and Walmart for things like that. If you just you, have to have something that you're looking for. You just have to use all the tools at your disposal. Use all the disposal. tools at your disposal. It takes a little extra effort. Fonda Gaynor, the coupon queen, thanks so much for coming on the show and opening up Wednesday for us with thanks money saving tips. Me. <laughs> and we'll be right back after your local weather. Welcome back to the show. I'm here with Laura Nelson from A-List Accounting, and we've got some new stuff to talk about for this tax season. And namely, it's the Affordable Care Act, or Obamacare. Correct. So just what we need in our lives, mm -hmm. there's some new forms we have to deal with, isn't there, this yes. year? It's kind of unique to this year. Correct. There's a whole new ball game. Yes. Um, basically, in order to get the credit so that you don't have to pay the 1%, mm -hmm. Or whatever and the one percent is, is that fine, fine yeah. or the tax, or whatever yeah, they're calling yeah. it. Um, you need a ten ninety five form from your marketplace, from your insurer, basically. A ten ninety five form from your insurer. So if right. I already have health insurance, mm -hmm. yes, I have to get a form from my insurer. They sh yes, they should have sent it out by January thirty first. Okay, just like the ten ninety nines and W twos, exactly. So you'll get a what was that form again? Ten ninety five. A ten ninety five from your health insurer and you have to file that with your taxes. Correct, because it shows what, you've, what you're insured for month by month, so it's not just a lump sum. Wow. And so in order to get even a credit for January through April, you need that form. Gee, I wonder what the next form's gonna be. <laughs> <laughs> How do you spend your money as a taxpayer? We wanna know. <laughs> yes. So you gotta fill out this form mm -hmm. and, 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 and send that in. Now, if you're have health insurance that you like mm -hmm. that is adequate mm -hmm. and you opt not to buy whatever's mm -hmm. on the, the exchanges mm -hmm. in the marketplace uh -huh. in that artificial marketplace mm -hmm. what happens you still have to pay a fine you still have to pay a fine yes but for instance i do know of several insurance companies that are not part of that plan but by the time you pay the lower end because it's only allowing people that are um not healthy, mm -hmm. you know, versus the marketplace is taking everyone, mm -hmm. and so therefore that's why your premium's high. Uh, so, you know. So you're kind of paying for other people Pretty through much. that fine or tax. So basically, it really is a backdoor tax for to life insurance, to your life insurance. Mm, yeah. I mean, if you've done anything right in your life, you probably have life insurance. <laughs> <Probably> <laughs> so you must be punished. <laughs> anyway. <laughs> And we'll talk more about that on the other side of this break. We'll be right back. <laughs> Welcome back to the show. I'm here with Laura Nelson from A-List Accounting, and we're talking about the Affordable Care Act and what that means to you this tax season. Yes. What does it mean to me? What does it mean to us this tax season? Basically, it just means that in order to get the credit, or just to get the basically not have to pay the fine, mm -hmm. you need your 1095. It's just your proof of insurance, basically. Okay. So you can't just say you have insurance, you know, and elect to move on. You actually have to have a 1095 to prove that you have insurance. So you have to present to the government proof that you are insured. Right. And then there is a form you can also fill out that if you didn't have insurance and you're lower income um, and you're within that threshold, you can exempt out of the fine as well. So there's, there's options. You just need to how know what is, they are. How much is the fine? I mean, if, uh, it's one percent of your AGI, or uh, there's a lower end bracket mm -hmm. per person. Okay, so, so it's a pretty substantial fine, I guess. Correct. It's, Depending it's, on your AGI. Yeah, yeah, and your adjusted gross income, one percent right. of your AGI, or Correct. Correct. some set figure that they have for yep. uh, people in a certain right. lower bracket. Right. Well, that's interesting stuff. So, uh, have you, with your clients, have you, uh, has it caused any confusion? Uh, at tax time for a lot of people or not yet um, it's caused people have to wait because they didn't realize they need that form I see so a few people thought they could file already and they yeah. don't have the form so so I guess pe uh, people are starting to file now or are you in the middle of tax season or oh yeah people are starting to file mm -hmm. yeah. so all right so you're, you're in the thick of it right now and, and people are starting to file and we've yeah. got to make sure that we've registered for all this stuff so what should what should people who are watching now, what should they do? Um, I mean, is there anything they need to do? They need to register with an exchange or they just need to file their taxes and go about their lives and make sure they have this form? Well, the only reason why they would register with ex 
with the marketplace just say is you know to get insurance mm -hmm. um, and then as far as the form they're just waiting for it to come in the mail um, if they had insurance and if they didn't then they need to um, see what their options are to maybe avoid paying that so if it's, it's, if it's all too confusing for people, mm -hmm. I mean, they can always consult a tax professional like yourself. Correct. And they can call Laura Nelson at A-List Accounting. Yes. And, uh, and you're on Facebook and you have a website, correct? Yes. A-ListAccounting.com and um, Facebook.com slash A-List Accounting. So just look for A-List Accounting and I'm sure you're in the yellow pages and all that stuff. Yeah. Too. <laughs> Laura Nelson, thanks a lot for getting us smart on this tax season and that uh, all-important forum that we need. And we'll be right back. Welcome back to the show. I'm here with Heather Noyes from Raymond James Financial. And we're going over some tips that we uh, talked about last week, aren't we? Yeah, we started. Uh, okay. I'll just give a little uh, rehash there. We um, work with uh, MIT, Massachusetts Institute of Technology, uh, and their study that they've been doing since 2006. They decided to incorporate finances and look at the way retirees um, the way they think about uh, different activities, housing and whatnot. Last mm -hmm. week we talked a little bit about housing and that it's the number one expense um, for retirees. It makes up about 34% sure. of that budget, changing the way, you know, countertops, thresholds, those types of things. So the other two that we're going to cover today, so last week we said, who's going to change my light bulb again to do mm -hmm. with housing? And then today we're going to talk about how can I, how will I get an ice cream cone? And who will I have lunch with? So how will I get an ice cream cone? <laughs> well, that when has I'm to do old with old and gray, right? That has to do with transportation. So again, mm -hmm. they kind of summarized this down and made it seem a little bit more simplistic than it is. But um, you've got to have transportation, right? Right. A lot of times, uh, older people tend to retire to the suburbs or even rural areas. So how are they going to get to maybe uh, a lunch, you know, date or um, any type of activity, whether it's going to theaters, going to the grocery store, going to the doctor or what have you. Maybe they've got to have a vehicle or they've got to have pay somebody to provide them with that transportation. If they're, so. if they're living independently, I know there's a lot of uh, senior communities that will provide transportation for you. Exactly. To go to those places, exactly. to go shopping and all that stuff. So from a financial standpoint, mm -hmm. you know, we got to look at that as a part of um, your financial plan or your retirement plan is that transportation actually makes up about 15% of that budget. So housing's 34, transportation's 15%, wow. and food is actually 13%. And healthcare is behind that, which you would think is a little bit higher. You would but think healthcare would be your biggest expense when you're old and gray, and maybe not in perfect health anymore. Right. Hmm. So the last one is like, is who uh, will I have lunch with? Which really boils down to, I think, the transportation and the who will I have lunch with has to do with the socialization. So mm -hmm. again, I mentioned that sometimes they retire to the suburbs or to rural areas. Uh, they lose contact. They don't have that social interaction. And we've talked a little bit before mm -hmm. about how I have some clients that are 65 that you would think are 90, and mm -hmm. I have some that are 80 that you would think are, you know, 50, 60, and it really has a, a lot to do with maintaining that social interaction that mm -hmm. people tend to lose whenever they uh, retire. But, but there's a cost uh, uh, factor associated with that. Absolutely. I mean, dollars and cents we're talking about. Absolutely. So even more so than just the, the social factor, um, it's uh, making sure from a mental standpoint that you're maintaining uh, that social so connection. So maybe you want to travel, you know, maybe sure. you have a circle of friends or mm -hmm. a club that you got to pay dues to or some activity that's in the final equation going to cost you. Yeah, so just uh, some, uh, a couple of things, creating a, song, a strong social network. Uh, you mentioned travel clubs, uh, senior, center, senior centers, uh, volunteering, um, going to your neighborhood coffee shop, social networking, of course, um, exercise mm -hmm. also. So sure. um, what I also found in their study was something about um, the health benefits of social interaction, which I was unaware of. Um, but again, some of the social uh, health benefits, rather, of social interaction, um, there's lower risk for cardiovascular problems. Uh, osteoporos osteoporosis and some cancers, lower risk of Alzheimer's, lower wow. blood, pr blood pressure, and lower risk for mental health versus mental health issues. Well, we're social animals mm -hmm. and, and people matter and people count in our lives. So it's important to make sure that you keep those connections as you get older, you know, and have that good circle of friends. Mm -hmm. It's like I told my son when he went to a new school, I said, as long as you have that one good friend, 
you're off to the races. Right. And before you know it, you got a large circle of friends around you. So the bottom line is when you're ret retired, mm -hmm. you want to be healthy, you want to be happy, and you want to be able to enjoy that retirement and have the finances in order to take care of it. So when in doubt, if you can achieve that, consult a financial advisor like yourself. Absolutely. Heather Noyes, Raymond James Financial, thank you so much for coming on the show. Thank you. And we'll be right back. Welcome back to the show. I'm here with Dan Hines from Hines Coaching. Yes, sir. Yeah. And, and you're <laughs> coaching people about the family budget. Yes, helping people uh, to get on a budget, get out of debt, and get to a point where they can save money and start saving for retirement and their dreams. Now, we, we, and, and we talked about relationships with money. Yes. Mm -hmm. And relationships with people. Yes. And money. Mm -hmm. I mean, we talk about your relationship with your kids and money. And what about your your, your, your family and your spouse. Yes. Um, so your spouse and money? Working with your spouse and money um, can be a big problem for a lot of people. And it doesn't have to be. Uh, because when it comes to your money, you want to work together as a family. And you mm -hmm. want to work together to create your goals and to, to move forward. Um, so when I coach my clients and we're talking about uh, how to deal with money with each other, um, we talk about especially married couples and spouses. I mean, if you're if you're living together and you have a kid together, certainly situations are mm -hmm. are different for everybody. Um, and so, the great advice that you should start with when it comes to your spouse is talk about your big goals. Your your mm -hmm. what do you want to do in retirement? You love to fish. You want to travel because if one of you wants a house in the mountains and one of you wants a house on the beach when you retire, then those two um, could be tough to do at the same time. Mm -hmm. Maybe you become snowbirds and you, you know, in the summertime you're in the mountains and the, the wintertime you're here in Florida. Uh, that's pr uh, probably a great solution. So have a, so have a, have a, yeah, my sister does that with her husband. They've yeah. got, yeah, they're snowbirds and mm -hmm, they've got, mm -hmm. they've got it all squared away. But, you know, you brought up a, a, an interesting point in that, you know, whether you're married or just living together, you need mm -hmm. to have this common goal, mm -hmm. which brings me around to the question, should you have separate accounts oh, if you're just living question. together or should mm -hmm. you have a joint account? I would strongly suggest to, if you're not legally married, keep it separate. I mean, you don't have mm -hmm. to have the big wedding and, and the ceremony, but if you're not legally married, go ahead and keep things separate. Mainly because it's too easy for one of you to leave or, yeah. or something to happen. I mean, maybe there's a car accident uh, and um, that money, because of just how things work with you the You open state yourself lawyers, to all kinds of liability yes, when mm -hmm, you commingle mm -hmm. funds like that. Right. And, and if it doesn't work out for whatever reason, yeah. you wind up on Judge Judy on this cha on this uh, channel, right. you know, arguing <laughs> over, you know, but even who if owns you're, what and who paid for what. Yeah, and even if mm -hmm. you're engaged, I would say keep it separate. One, I mean, mm -hmm. you're about to be married, so you'll, you'll combine things uh, in the future, so keep accounts separate. However, you do want to start budgeting together. You still want to start working together mm -hmm. with your money. Now, we talked about the big goals. You also want to talk about maybe those goals that you want to get done in the next six months or the next year. Those short-term things to say, well, I really want to get the truck paid off or um, I really want to get this credit card paid off or I want to start saving for retirement or let's go on vacation. Those things where it's, it's within reach and you can start to plan for those. Um, so when you start budgeting, there's two things you need to remember, especially as a married couple, is that you want to not try to control each other with the mm -hmm. budget. The budget is not there to say, I'm going to control your spending or I'm going to control that spending. It's you're a, f a family together trying to make things work and reach your goals. So having that goal conversation is extremely important first. Uh, the, the second thing that I do want to say is be sure to have some fun money. Mm -hmm. <laughs> is that my wife and I, uh, she has 50 bucks a month and I've got 50 bucks a month and neither of us get to tell each other what to do with that money. It's our money and mm -hmm. if my friends invite me out for drinks or coffee and her friends want to go uh, out for lunch uh, during work, that's fantastic. If there's money in our pockets, then we can mm -hmm. go do that, no questions asked. You should always have a little cash on yeah, you, right? Yeah, just have a, just a, a, a little bit of mm -hmm. cash or a little bit, it, and it could be just a budget item. Mm -hmm. If you're using a debit card, that's fine too. Um, but to make sure that you have some money sitting there for you, and you don't have to ask your husband or your wife, well, can I go out to lunch today? Now, to learn more about this, I understand you have an event coming up on February yes. 24th? Yes, so it's Tuesday mm -hmm. night, February 24th, and it's February, so we've got Valentine's Day. Mm -hmm. And so it's all going to be about relationships and money. Cause nothing, we, nothing says love more than budgeting. Oh, goodness, yes. yes. <laughs> well, and hopefully I can stop help, yeah. help stop some fights as well. Yeah. But, 
you know, this whole month we've been talking about you and kids and money, and you and your spouse and money, you and yourself and money, and then we're also going to talk about you and your friends and money. And so uh, the workshop, it's really going to be just kind of a, a support session. Come share your story, how things have gone well, or if you have questions, how can I do better? It's going to be less of a formal, here's what you need to do, and more about let's just share. Let's together do figure I just, things out. Do I just show up, or, or oh, do I have to question. register? Or? It is free. Mm -hmm. So I would love if you could get onto Facebook and go to Dan Hines Coaching on Facebook and just say, yes, I'm coming. Or uh, go ahead and you can find more info at my website, FixingFamilyFinances.com. FixingFamilyFinances.com. Yes, Rolls sir. right off the tongue. <laughs> uh, or Dan Hines Coaching on Facebook, and we can, we, we can avail ourselves this great opportunity to figure out our finances, learn what we need to learn, because you don't know what you don't know. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. On February 24th, Dan Hines and Dan Hines Coaching. Thank you so much. Thanks, Don. Appreciate it. And we'll see you next time.